Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Alex here. Now you've seen my extensive testing of the new MacBook Pros here on this channel focused on developer technologies. I'm far from being done by the way, and you keep asking me for more, so I've got a lot more tests to do. But today, I just wanted to take a little pause and to give you my thoughts after a few weeks of testing these machines about the new MacBooks with the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips in them and comparing them to my Intel and M1 MacBooks and to each other. Now I've made some early conclusions on why you should buy the new machines for yourself or your loved one um if i got one of these as a gift i would just now there are pros and cons to the new macbooks and this video is about the pros and the reasons why the developer would be interested in buying one of these machines so i'll focus on the pros in this video and i want you to keep the pros in mind when i go over the reasons of why they're good for us developers pro number one obviously more power and of course this is the most important reason for some developers although not all and I'll clarify this in a little bit, is that they want to have a more performant machine. Number two, this machine has more holes in it. Unlike the underside of a boat, we like our laptops to have more holes. The more holes, the better. <laughs> I'm talking about ports, of course. And the new MacBook Pros have a lot of holes. Three Thunderbolt 4 holes, a headphone hole, a hole to plug it in, an SD card hole, and an HDMI hole. I mean, you know all this already. Number three, longer battery. Now the length of the battery must be measured in it's centimeters. battery life, not battery length, you idiot. Oh, uh, right. I meant the battery life. The new machines do in fact last a very long time, far longer than I've ever had to use them so far between having them plugged in. I haven't yet run into a time when my new MacBooks, I got a couple of them for testing purposes, but even the one that I've really spent a lot of time with, the one that I'm planning to keep as my daily machine, it has never once complained about being low on juice. All right. So now let's get into the reasons why these would be a machine that you would want to consider. First and foremost, if you have an existing MacBook or another type of laptop, whatever it might be, and you're building on tech that's limiting your productivity, get it. If the technology you're working with is compatible with Apple Silicon hardware, then you should get the new MacBook Pros. For example, you might have a MacBook from 2015. It still works beautifully as these MacBooks tend to do. And I'm not an Apple fanboy or maybe I'm becoming one. I don't know, but they're really convincing me over the years that they make good hardware. I still have an Apple 2015 MacBook Pro and it still works well. I don't use it anymore because I have faster machines, but if I had to, I would. Anyway, if you have something like that or a 2013, and the machine is showing its age where the software you're running is sluggish and you have maybe time to watch YouTube videos while your code is building. Are you building code right now while you're watching this? Then perhaps you're a good candidate for this kind of machine. Number two, the software technology stack you're working on requires the best hardware, the top-notch hardware to stay productive. I'll give you some examples and I'll go into this more uh, in a different video that's related to what types of devs need what type of MacBook, separate video. Let's say you are a game developer or a data engineer and you really need to have that extra GPU power, CPU power to crunch those numbers, then you're a good candidate for this machine. Also, mobile devs, come on, those people that develop mobile apps have to have multiple simulators, multiple emulators, especially emulators, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you Android devs. Those suck up a lot of resources. And yes, uh, maybe your old machine with the eight gigabytes could run an emulator or maybe even two, but barely. The 16 gigabyte MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros from uh, last generation could definitely run them. But if you wanted to do a little bit more, if you wanted to run more at the same time, more virtual machines, then you're really limited. And at this point, you want to go 32 gigabytes or even 64. Mobile devs can always use a little bit more hardware and especially faster hardware. It's not so much the writing of the code, it's the local testing of the code. So there you go. Also, not many of you are in this category, but if your dev work has to do with processing media, audio, and especially video, I myself have been doing lots of video work with FFmpeg, a video processing library for those that aren't familiar with it, because one of my dev projects requires it. And I've seen some improvements on the new machines, significant improvements. As a side note, if you're interested in seeing a video about processing videos with FFmpeg, a developer's perspective, we won't be rendering with Premiere Pro or Final Cut, don't worry. <laughs> but if you are 
are interested in FFmpeg, let me know down in the comments below. And also, for those of you that asked me about Handbrake, Handbrake uses FFmpeg under the hood, so that would be a relevant video to you also. Number three, if you're on the road a lot, for those of us that still travel for work, and you're constantly hunting for power outlets in airports, I used to do that quite a bit. <laughs> I would carry spare batteries for laptops. Uh, my, my old Lenovo had an extra battery that I bought that I would carry with me on airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't miss that. And then if you're traveling internationally, you need the adapters to fit your laptop. Uh crazy. Anyway, as I was mentioning earlier about the battery life, this latest crop of MacBook Pros has the battery life of a bowhead whale, of a rough-eyed rockfish, of a Greenland shark, of a freshwater pearl mussel, of a tube worm, of an ocean quahog clam. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that some of these animals existed and that they lived for so long. Wow. Thanks, live science. Moving on. Number four. If you happen to have um, extra money laying around, maybe underneath your couch cushions, and you get your kicks from having the latest and greatest hardware, then there you go, you should buy one. <laughs> no, but seriously though, if you're one of those folks that has now realized that buying an Apple MacBook actually might be cheaper in certain cases than an equally powered PC laptop, then you might pick up one of these every year or two. Why? Well, based on my own personal experience and anecdotally, the resale value of MacBooks is unbelievably high for a piece of technology and especially a laptop at that. I've sold my old MacBooks on Craigslist. <laughs> Craigslist is uh, this website where we sell and buy stuff in the United States at least. And I've taken advantage of Apple's own trade-in program and after years of using the MacBooks I was still able to get about 30% back. Now can you say that about any PC laptop you've ever owned for a few years? I don't think so. Unless some of the parts were made with gold or maybe it has some valuable government secrets on it. So I mentioned earlier that this is not for all developers. So why not all developers? Now I'll have a more dedicated video on this soon. So be sure you subscribe. But if you're starting out as a dev, maybe you're doing some web development, front end or back end, maybe a bit of Python here and there, or even some iOS development, it's likely you don't need to get these new machines. You can do all your work on an M1 MacBook Air or even an older MacBook. It builds character. So will I be switching over to the new MacBook? Well, I kind of already gave a hint. Yeah. I will be. If you remember back in January of 21, I made a video on whether developers should get the M1 Mac. And while it did make sense for many, at that time it didn't fulfill all of my needs. I said in that video that I was waiting for the M2 or the MX or whatever the next generation will be called. Well, it's called the M1 Max, and right now, I am in the process of switching over to it for my 2014 iMac as my primary machine. I wouldn't say that my needs as a developer are typical though, because I do lots of different stuff, I work with lots of different technologies, web, mobile, I do lots of virtualizations, and I do video stuff. So I'll be detailing all that in an upcoming video. Anyway, that's what I think after a few weeks of testing the new MacBooks. Hopefully this is helpful to somebody just before the holiday season, and if you did like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not already for more tests and my thoughts about the new macbooks and other machines we'll be doing some comparisons once the new alder lakes come out looking forward to that thanks a lot folks i'll see you next time